Hi everybody and welcome back to Gladly Global where we teach you all about language methodology and how to stay accountable to your language goals. In today's video we're going to be talking about why it's difficult to learn more than one language and a look at some of the challenges you will face along the way. What these are and how you can best sort of circumvent them or at least uh, how you should approach them to get past them as easily as possible. To do that, we must first talk a little bit about the brain. While the brain can tackle a lot more abstract things than uh, your regular computer could, that is to say in a way that is a lot less binary or straightforward, um, essentially what the brain wants to do is to be as effective as possible. And that is why we run into a lot of the troubles we have when we try to learn more than one language. And this is because as language learners, or as human beings, that is, because we're all language learners really, aren't we? And this is because the language we learn as we are young and growing up as children has a direct impact on the way we see and interpret the world around us. The only way we can see, interpret and interact with the world around us is through language. Language is essentially, without exaggeration, completely responsible in shaping our worldview. And this is exactly why learning a second language, once you have mastered one, is difficult. And while we have our fantastically powerful brains at our disposal, they are always not quite up to the task. Since we already mentioned, they our brains want to do things as efficiently as possible, which means that they are, in essence, extremely lazy, always looking for the quickest way to do things. As we have already created an entire understanding of the world around us, dependent on our mother tongues or languages that we already know, it is a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot of work for the brain to completely break down these preconceptions of the world around us. Because that is essentially what we're doing when we're learning a new language. We're learning to see the world from a different perspective, from a different way, and understanding it differently. So this basically means that all the little connections between the language and the world around us become completely arbitrary as uh, from one language to the other, there can be little to no resemblance at all and you won't be able to sort of take one piece in one language and apply it to the other in, in a straightforward way that you wish you could because they're just so inherently different. This is very difficult for the brain to process. That is why we often find ourselves getting frustrated and flustered while we're trying to master a new tongue. This is when we arrive at the stage of the language learning process that linguists call interlanguage, which is basically when your L1, your native language, and the L2, your second language that you're trying to acquire, sort of blends into this huge mess that is completely without logic because you're still trying to sort of convert your brain into thinking in this new manner that aligns with the, your second language, but it's still completely reliant on going through the first language. And this is also related to the dreaded, infamous um, intermediate plateau, because we have a good basic understanding of the second language, but it's difficult for us to really use the language actively as well as we would like, because the sort of concepts that uh, are tied to this language are not completely solidified because we are still to some degree very much reliant on our first language in using the second one. To be frank it has a lot to do with the non-linguistic aspects of language learning which is to say culture. Culture and language are so incrementally tied together that you basically have to have a functioning deep well-rounded understanding of the culture belonging to whatever language you're learning in order to actually feel comfortable in using the language, to know the sort of range of expressions and to really use the language as would a native speaker. As language learners and polyglots, we're of course not aiming to 
towards monolingual fluency because that is physically impossible because of a lot of the points I've already mentioned earlier. But there is still a need to understand the language in line with natives. And as we need this sort of cultural frame of reference to use the language accurately, now getting past this stage is very difficult because it is an extremely non-linear process. There is no one way to go about it. We can't really even use the same tools we would for the sort of metalinguistic aspect of the language. There is no way to really develop this understanding, a frame of reference, etc. Uh, from a textbook, really, unfortunately, for many. <laughs> as much as we wish we could, this is the stage where immersion really sort of becomes essential to developing the language further, where you have a good grasp of the basics and you can express yourself to a level that you feel comfortable with, even though you feel it's also lacking because you know sort of where you want to get to. So during this intermediate stage, it is much more important to focus on immersion and cultural understanding rather than the language itself, because you've already built up a good sort of basic understanding of the language and you can use it within a fairly limited range but you still feel that you have a good grasp on it. At this stage everything just goes beyond the metalinguistic. I think we've all run into language learners at some point who have a very good grammatical understanding of the language that they're studying but they can barely speak it for example and this is where they sort of faltered because they've pushed through this stage of the language learning process just by completely ignoring it basically where they pushed on and kept filling their brains with more of the metalinguistic content that they're used to studying and as a result they can pass language exams and so on with with uh, like very good grades and with good results but they still remain stuck in this stage to a certain degree where they really can't use the language as effectively as we all would like to this idea of changing our frame of reference of our perspective when we're learning a new language is absolutely incremental for our success in acquiring a new language. So you can't really skip this stage as much as we all wish we could because it can be extremely frustrating and is a very, very slow process. And that's just the way it is, for better or for worse. Okay, I'm gonna round up this video here, a bit of a sour note to end on perhaps, but don't worry, there'll be a part two, because this would be a much too long a video if I didn't split it up. So make sure that you press the subscribe button if you haven't already to keep up to date for when that second video will drop. Now, I hope you thought this video was very insightful and you learned something new from it. I would love to discuss this more with you in the comments below. Please share any thoughts you had as you watched the video or if you have any information that I perhaps glanced over while making this, I am all ears. Now in the second part, I will go more in depth into these issues where this was more of an overview to give you a sort of chance to dip your toes in the water as it were. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Good time zone.